Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Extend Script tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make a script that will read all of the effects inside of After Effects that you have installed. It's got a nice UI with the drop down that will display the names of all of the effects you have installed. And if you select any one of them, it will update the drop down below, which has all the match names. So of course, this is going to be a script for After Effects. So let's go ahead and hop right in by creating a new JavaScript file and zooming in just a little bit. So first, let's start off with our user interface. Uh, it's basically just a window with two groups um, with all these elements contained in them. So create a variable called main window equal to a new window. And the first parameter is the type of window, which will make a palette window. Then the second parameter is the name of it, which we'll call read all installed effects. And then we need the size parameters, which will set to undefined so that it automatically uh, updates it. And then I'm going to grab my main window object and change the orientation to column so that all of the groups full of elements we put in go from top to bottom. And then we'll create the two groups. Um, first, we'll call one name group, which will contain this name text and then the names of all of the effects. So we'll set this equal to uh, our main window. We're going to add a group undefined size and position parameters and we're just going to name this name group then um, so that the elements go from left to right i'm going to set the orientation of our name group equal to row and then we need to create this static text that says name and then the drop down that's going to contain all of this stuff now you'll also notice how nicely aligned these are both of the texts have the same size and the drop downs have the same size uh, we're going to hand code in what the sizes are. That way we can force them to be the same size and look nice. So we're going to create a variable called name text and we'll set this equal to our name group and we're going to add some static text. Undefined size and then we're going to have the text say name and then down below we'll grab our name text dot size and define it here. That way we don't have to put in the position or anything as well. So we'll just set the size to be something like 80 by 25. And then we'll move on to create this dropdown. We'll say var name dd for name dropdown is equal to our name group. And we're going to add a dropdown list, undefined parameters. And what we're going to do is actually create a function that's going to retrieve all of these. And the name of that function is going to be get all effect names. And that function is going to return an array with all of the names. And this parameter right here requires an array of strings, which is exactly what this function is going to give us. And then also we want it to be default, have a certain element selected. So we'll set the name dd.selection equal to zero. All right, and now let's go ahead and just copy and paste this down below. And what we're going to do now is a little trick to create the exact same group but with the match name rather than the regular name. So I'm going to make sure I have the second pasted group selected. In the find and replace window, we're gonna search for anything with the name name, and we're gonna change it, replace it with match name. And then under the search where, we're gonna make sure it's the current selection, this bit here, and then click on replace all. This will create the same exact group, but with some unique names uh, referring to the match names. And then we're also going to want to update this function here, get all effect names, to get all effect match names. We're going to make a secondary function that only gets the match names rather than the, the display name. So now down below we'll grab our main window and center it and then we'll grab our main window again and show it. Close this UI, make sure we're connected to After Effects and launch it. You can see now things are almost there. It looks like we're needing to specify the sizes of the drop downs. The drop downs have different sizes as well as update the text here which just says name. It should say match name. So I'll change this to say match name, and then the drop down lists need to have the same size. So I'll say match name dd dot size, and we'll give them something like 220 pixels by 25. And then I'll copy and paste that and change this just to be the name dd. Now when we launch it, we've got our UI looking very nice. We have our name, all of the list of names. You'll notice that this is actually populated with a bunch of names. That's because um, it's actually running this code from the previous script. So it, it still thinks that this function exists, even though I haven't created it yet. But yours should be blank. So it should really look like this. We have um, basically our name, an empty dropdown, and our match name and an empty dropdown. 
Now we need to uh, undo that and create these functions for getting the effect names. So down below, create a function called get all effects names. This doesn't require any parameters or arguments. And then down below that, we'll create one called get all effect match names. Now inside of the After Effects scripting guide, you can go to the application object and see there is an app.effects, which will retrieve an array containing the following properties um, of all of the effects containing the properties of the display name, the category it's in, so like blur and sharpen, color correction, and the match name. So we're going to be using this to both retrieve and then get all of the specifics. So under the get all effect names, we needed an array to fill it up with all the names. So we'll just say names is equal to an empty array. And then again, remember, we want to return an array full of the names for this dropdown. So we're going to end up returning our names. And now we need to fill up this array with all of the effect names. In order to do this, we're going to create a variable called effects and set this equal to uh, app.effects. And now that's going to all of a sudden be full of all the effects that they have installed on their computer. In order to only get the display names, we're going to loop through it by creating a for loop, starting with var i is equal to zero, because we're uh, starting with an array, so we need to start at this zero with index. And then for i is less than our effects.length, increment i by one. And each time we go through, we want to uh, grab our names array and push something into it. So the first time, what we're going to do is grab effects and i. So what this is going to do is loop through all of the effects that they have installed, which is going to each time through uh, look at a different object. This object contains things like the display name and the category and the match name. So we want to take the display name and push that as the names. So we're going to say our effects i dot display name. And the display name is equivalent to what you see here, the actual readable name inside of After Effects. So again, we're just looping through all of the effects, and inside of our names array, we're just basically each time pushing through the effect display name. Then I'm going to copy and paste this into our get all effect match names, and we're going to change a few things. We're going to change names to match names, and we need to return the match names and push the match names. And instead of using the display name, we're going to say dot match name. All right, so now if we go ahead and launch the script in After Effects, we should be working fine. Um, but you'll notice that if I click and change the name, say change the effect to fog 3D, uh, the match name is not updating. So let's add an event listener to each of these dropdowns. So whenever you select a new effect, it's going to update for the other one. So down below where we show our main window, I'm going to first grab our name dropdown, name DD. And we're going to add an on change uh, function here by saying on change is equal to an anonymous function. And inside of this function here, we're just going to write one line of code. We want to change the selection of our match name dropdown to equal whatever the name dropdown is. So if they change the name dropdown, update the other one so that it has the same uh, effect index as that dropdown. So I'll say match name dd dot selection is equal to our name dd dot selection, but we need to get the index of the selection because uh, if you were just to grab the selection, it would give you say fog 3D. It wouldn't give you the number inside of the array that it is. So we need to grab the index of that selection. And then down below, we'll create uh, an on change for the match name dd. So say dot on change is equal to a function. And this time we're going to change the name dropdown. So say name dd dot selection is equal to and it needs to be equal to our match name dd dot selection. And again, the index so we get the actual integer. So now let's go ahead and run the script and change the name here to fog 3d. And you can see the match name dropdown is going to now be updating to show us the match name of the newly selected effect. And then likewise, if we change the match name, it's going to update the name drop down above as well. And that's going to do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to create a script that will read all of the effects and match names of all of the things you have installed on your version of After Effects. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and hit subscribe to be notified of new videos coming out every week. You can now also follow the channel on Instagram at ntproductionsig. The link will be in the description. Be sure to follow us on there for behind the scenes content and updates live about when tutorials are coming out and what they're about. And of course, follow us on GitHub as well, where we release code all the time 
for free and work on secret projects. And that's going to do it for the video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.